Welcome everybody to our live stream, live here from the location of Uptown Basel in Arlesheim, Switzerland. My name is Desiree Lehmann and as a moderator I will guide you a little bit through today's live stream. I'm really happy to be here at the Uptown Basel location. Um, today we also do have guests for this second session, so I want to also greet everybody here in the audience to join us here. Why hosting this event from this specific location? Well, it's a perfect match because Quantum Basel is a competence center for quantum and artificial intelligence and Uptown Basel has the first quantum computer hub for commercial use in Switzerland. So it's amazing for that we can do this here and it also fulfills everybody here with pride for that we can um, represent Switzerland in this great event where over 65 other countries are participating. In this session, we will um, present four different partners of Quantum Basel who are located in the US and in Canada, which include Jason Silver Glide by IBM in Yorktown in New York, then also Dr. Frederick Flöter, live from the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, and also some footage of Dr. Lara Chihai. Then we will switch over to Murray Tom from D-Wave, live in Canada. Before last but not least, we will hear something from Leonardo Rocchetti from Plug and Play Tech Center in Silicon Valley. I mean, what a lineup. You surely don't want to miss the opportunity to use the comment section in your live stream. And we are really happy to discuss your comments and questions in between the different speeches if there is some time left. Therefore, I'm really happy to have some experts by my side, Alexandra Beckstein, CEO of Kai Ventures, and Damia Bogdan, CEO of Uptown Basel Infinity and Quantum Basel. I now hand over the words to you before we already start with our first speaker. Damir, up to you. Thank you, Desiree. Welcome from my side as well to the second part. Good morning, America and Canada. <laughs> While March 14 has become the day for known as Pi Day, reflecting to the constant of uh, first three digits 3.14, a collection of quantum scientists has chosen April 14 as World Quantum Day, reflecting the rounded up first three digits of Planck constants 4.14 the fundamental constant governing quantum physics. Welcome to Uptown Basel. Why quantum? We are an innovation campus. And when we are looking at the world's problems, they are getting bigger and bigger and more and more challenging. So the complexity of the problem, like climate, is rising. That means that when you want to solve these problems, you need more and more data when you need more and more data, you need no, more and more structure like artificial intelligence. With more and more artificial intelligence, you need more and more computational power. And if you want to be an innovation campus like Quantum Basel, and you know that more and more computational power also means more and more energy consumption, then it's a clear given that we have to think as well about quantum computing. So, our campus is fully privately funded and with the mission to support how to abolish animal testing. So Quantum Basel has a broad network, a great ecosystem and a broad array of different kinds of technologies. With our partner IBM, we have direct access to one of the most, or I can't say one because it's more, but we will find out later about that, but to the most powerful quantum uh, machines uh, today. 
We also have direct connections to our partner D-Wave Systems, with whom we are doing quantum annealing. So why superconducting of IBM and quantum annealing? We will answer these questions later. I referred already to the notion of artificial intelligence, and our customers are in the field of logistics, in the field of Industry 4.0, and in the field of life science healthcare. These are three different time frames we want to tackle, but we can't do so with, without also thinking at university partners, academias, researchers, and startups. And with that, I want to hand over to Alexandra. Welcome to this afternoon session. Happy World Quantum Day to everyone. I stick to my statement from this morning that the ecosystem, or for the ecosystem we are building up here, startups are a crucial part. And we, with Kai Ventures, the investment arm of Quantum Basel, we support the startups by giving them a ground to grow and to develop. And we do this by investing in them. We invest into global startups, not only Swiss and not only European startups. We are scouting startups globally. We do this by giving them access to a one-to-one -one tailored personalized acceleration program. And we do this by giving them access to our corporate network, to world-class mentors, and to our um, uh, computer access by Quantum Basel. With that said, the world's first dedicated quantum compu computing focused on commercial businesses was one qubit and established in Vancouver, British Columbia. Only four years later, IBM launched Q, which was with five qubit, the quantum computing services via cloud in 2016. So it is my pleasure now to hand over to Jason Silvergleit, Vice President from IBM Research, IBM Quantum in the United States. And Jason, I hope you are with us. We are very looking forward to hearing from you. Thank, thank you, Demir. Uh, and good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jason, excuse me for one second. My name is Jason Silbergleit, and I have responsibility for partnerships, alliances, and sales of our quantum capabilities. I really appreciate the opportunity, Demir and, and team, to have the opportunity to speak to you on this World Quantum Day 2023. You will hear a lot today about the current state of quantum. I'm here to talk about the future of quantum computing. Talking about the future is always hard because it hasn't happened yet. But our confidence continues to grow because we have consistently set the bar and achieved through our roadmap planning and execution. We've been very good at hitting our milestones we have set uh, over the past four years. So let's use this as the basis for talking about what's next. 2023 is a special year for us. It marks a step change in our roadmap and a shift into the era of quantum-centric supercomputing. And this year, we're launching two quantum processors. The first quantum processor is we call Condor. Condor will be the first quantum processor to break the 1,000 qubit barrier. We really see Condor as a way of really pushing the limits of single chip technology. By pushing the limits, we continue to learn more. At the same time as, as Condor, we're also working in parallel on Heron. We are extremely excited because of the resultant capability. While it has less qubits than Condor, it's the first processor we can employ in a large numbers working together to speed up workflows. And it is also the first device with more than 100 qubits with three nines gate fidelity. It's got the best of both worlds. We intend to connect Heron processors together classically. This will allow us to break down certain problems using classical parallelization. So we're building this into the hardware and into the extensions of Qiskit runtime and calling these threaded primitives. So in 2023, 
we get to drive limits of within processor qubits and also connect qubits, uh, the processors classically. In 2024, we're aiming to do two things at once again. One is to create processors that can be connected using long range quantum interconnects. And this allows us to connect processors within cryostats. So this is what we call Flamingo, a bird with long legs and a processor with long range connects. Next, with Crossbill, we're connecting the processors directly to each other using quantum connects, effectively creating one larger chip out of several smaller chips. And then in 2025, we're combining both these approaches to create Kookaburra. With Kookaburra, we'll be able to connect chips within cryostats and then connect cryostats together to create larger systems and effectively scale as large as we want to go. So we have all these wonderful innovations in software and hardware coming, uh, coming towards uh, the future. The question is, what's new system that we have to create to hold all these new innovations in software and hardware? Now we're going to talk about quantum system two, the building block for quantum centric supercomputing. First was to design a quantum computing system capable of housing a three-tiered chandelier holding multiple processors held within a cryostat. This cryostat maintains a near-perfect vacuum and has temperatures colder than deep space. We needed to control the systems to be as physically close to the cryostat as possible to minimize latency. On top of this, we need this, the system to be extensible so we can add more control systems as we continue to expand the qubit counts. Quantum system two is not just a standalone system. It is it's designed to be a building block for quantum centric supercomputing. So this, to this end, we needed the system to be modular. In other words, it should be possible to connect multiple cryostats and multiple quantum system twos together with long range couplers connecting the processors. By connecting two cryostats together, we can create a system of over 8,000 qubits. By connecting three cryostats together, we can create up to a greater than 16,000 qubits in one system. This modularity also extends to the compute and gas handling banks. We designed it to be 100% customizable so clients can extend their com computational capacity by swapping out classical compute racks for AI racks and vice versa. We also took into account human factors. Building on the idea of modular furniture, we created a working environment that is considerate to both engineers and our clients. And on top of all these other requirements, the quantum system two, like our existing quantum system one, need to look absolutely beautiful and iconic. It's hard to visualize these designs using just still images. So we've created this short film to give you a sense of the system. So with that, let me turn it over to, to share the film. So this talk 
was about the future of quantum computing. Quantum System 2 is our future. It has been designed to be the building block of quantum-centric supercomputing and the system that brings useful quantum computing to the world. We will have a live working Quantum System 2 to share with you at the IBM Quantum Summit later this year. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today and enjoy the rest of, uh, the, rest of the event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. I think it's a small round of applause here. I think it's amazing to see what IBM has developed in the past, and I cannot wait to see what it will develop in the future, um, especially as you have the connection with IBM so closely working together. Do you think that Quantum Basel and you will be part of the development of IBM? Oh, definitely. And I can look into the camera, and I hope, Jason, you can see me. But uh, with, uh, with Quantum Basel, we have a long-going now partnership with IBM, where we also grow. So the systems Jason announced before, we will be a mutual part of that. So we already have now first access, not just to the 433 qubit, but also to the first future uh, uh, system two. And so we are growing mutually with IBM. And when I talk of we, then it's not just about us, it is about our customers. And this is the main point here. Because we are a hub which enables it. And together with IBM, we are on the way there. Jason, I maybe also would be interested, as I'm not totally in the field, you know, um, the tendency is clear. The qubits and the numbers of qubits uh, will grow and grow and grow. But is the more qubit always the better, or are different numbers of qubits used for different tasks that a quantum computer system should solve? So I think as you see in our roadmap, you know, we're, we're experimenting across number of, uh, of qubits. You've got to have quality of qubits. So we're working across both um, uh, quality and obviously quantity. So it's, it's as part of the roadmap to get towards uh, uh, even, even greater capabilities. Thank you so much, Jason. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you, Namir. Have a great day. Bye. You, you too. Bye-bye. Damn, it's so amazing to have someone of IBM having this deep connection. I, I really felt that you already have more like a friendship because you're working together on that vision. Um, how did the connection with IBM um, was originally um, came together. I think that was especially autumn 2022, who was very important for the way that, or the point where we are now. Well, absolutely. In, uh, the day you are uh, reflecting to is the day when we signed our contracts with IBM. But signing a contract are two things. First of all, it's the end of a process, of a long process, and this long process also binds ties together on the one hand, and on the other hand, the best contract is the one you'll never see again. It's in the drawing. And at the moment, I don't know even where this contract is, because yes, we are very uh, working closely together. And uh, so we are, uh, and I think also when you, when you have something visionary and with Uptown Basel, with Quantum Basel, we want to work on visions, then you have to have the right people and the right partners on board. Without that, you can't share a vision. Talking about partners and synergies, I, we saw in the presentation of, of Jason how he puts together these systems, you know, for that they can become something bigger. And I think that's a great metaphor for actually what happens today at the World Quantum Day, because so many institutions come together and try to find where they could collaborate. How are you experiencing the World Quantum Day so far and the synergies and what's happening? Well, it is uh, between the two sessions, I had the opportunity to look a little bit to stroll at other events. And what I saw is exactly the, the, the one point is the connection, the bringing things together. And in the first session this morning, when we had uh, our session with the University of Bologna, with Cineca, with the supercomputer Leonardo, the fourth largest supercomputer worldwide, then uh, we also saw how can we connect quantum Basel, how can we connect quantum computers to, to, to classical computers? Because the future is hybrid. It's not just 
either quantum or classical computer. It is both. And so connecting everything together is important when you want to achieve something in this field. And Quantum Basel is a hub for connecting people and companies. You have visited IBM in New York in the past, right? I haven't just visited it. I've been there multiple times. In the holy grail, I saw the right. quantum yeah. systems. Maybe you can share a little bit more how it looks like, if you're allowed to. Well, I, uh, I wasn't allowed to take any pictures, but uh, uh, in fact, it is impressive to see a series of quantum computers working one by one alongside. Today, they are all in this cryostats, so they are all these systems where you can see them as these big refrigerators. But uh, I've also learned from Alessandro Curioni, the head of uh, uh, IBM Research here in Rüschlikon, that one of the next systems then they also they are working on not to have this cryostatic. Uh, uh, they will still be cryostatic, but there won't be the same chandeliers kind of looky like. So they are working on that. And coming back to your question, it was uh, interesting to see this technology will change industry. Question is in three years, in five years, in ten years, but it will, and we are part of that. I think that was an amazing start for this afternoon session here from Uptown Basel, and I think we are ready for the next speaker. Maybe you can introduce them. They are uh, situated now in Ohio. Yeah, um, in fact, it's in Cleveland, I, and uh, still. I have talked about uh, cryostatic, so quantum computing requires extremely cold temperatures as subatomic sub uh, particles must be as close as possible to stationary state. And so uh, the cores of, uh, of these computer operates at minus 273 degrees Celsius plus 0 0.002 degrees, so really very near uh, by absolute zero. And so I want to hand over to Frederik Flöter, who is uh, lead quantum here at Quantum Basel. He's at the moment at, in Cleveland, at the Cleveland Clinic. And why I am talking about temperatures? Because I think Frederik stands directly in front of a quantum computer. So how cold is it, Frederik? Thank you, Damir. Um, well, you can see I am not wearing a jacket, so it is all right. The quantum computer is behind me, but it is obviously uh, well insulated, so there's no need <laughs> as you're standing outside of it. So I'm, I'm indeed coming to you today from the Cleveland Clinic, and I want to maybe ask, first of all, why does quantum deserve a world day? Well. Quantum mechanics itself was already developed 100 years ago, and we already have some well-established quantum technologies, uh, such as lasers. Uh, however, we are right now in the middle of yet another quantum revolution, and you can see some of these new quantum technologies on the slide here, which are, uh, which are now being developed and which are rapidly maturing. And if we focus on quantum computing uh, specifically, well, why are we so excited about it? Well, quantum computers, although they cannot speed up everything, but they are the only known model uh, that could provide an exponential speed up, at least for some applications compared with our traditional methods. And if we just let that sink in, that's of course a tremendous uh, opportunity we have here. And one of the most recent developments in the field is this fusion and symbiosis that is starting to develop on the one hand quantum and on the other hand machine learning and artificial intelligence. And so how does that work? Well, classical machine learning is being used to study and allow us to build better quantum computers, for instance, by reducing the noise. And on the other hand, quantum computers are being used in order to create better machine learning models, and enhance their accuracies and also efficiencies. So let's just focus on one sector that's poised to be transformed by quantum AI, and that's healthcare, life sciences, and medicine. 
And in just the last few years alone, even though we still have a long way to go, but just in those few years, more than 40 proof of concept studies have actually been carried out. Um, most, although not all of them, based on quantum AI. And you can see some of these examples here of the use cases that are being explored. They range from accelerated genomic analyses to enhanced medical imaging to personalizing treatments, such as through tailored radiotherapy. The general theme is that we want to make medicine much more personalized and proactive. So keeping people healthy in the first place. Now with that, um, I do want to say thank you already from my side. Uh, thank you for joining me here at the quantum computer. And I do want to hand it over now to Laura, uh, who will talk more about how IBM and Cleveland Clinic are working in this space and how this shiny, nice quantum computer is being put to use. So thank you and regards. Good day. And uh, thank you to Damir and to the organizers of this uh, meeting for the opportunity to join. Unfortunately, I couldn't join in person. Uh, we are now hosting in Cleveland Clinic a two-day quantum working group uh, meeting uh, to create the roadmap for healthcare and life sciences for quantum. So I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but hopefully this will be the first of many more interactions. Um, my name is Lara J. Hyde, the Chief Research Information Officer for Cleveland Clinic, and I'll introduce you in the next few minutes to our partnership with IBM through the Discovery Accelerator. Um, the um, the roadmap is quite simple. I'll start first by introducing who we are, why we're working together, how we're working together, Cleveland Clinic and IBM and the Discovery Accelerator, but then conclude by the most important piece, which is how can we, uh, the Discovery Accelerator team and all of you work together uh, moving forward. A few words about Cleveland Clinic. We're a global organization that is uh, 101 years old. Last year, we celebrated, well, 2021, we celebrated our centennial. And with that, we revised our mission to put research for health in the center uh, of what we are focused on. And we're accomplishing this mission uh, across our multiple hospitals and outpatient facilities uh, in the United States, Canada, the UK, and uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, in parallel to our um, uh, clinical care uh, mission, the research has always been quite front and center. Over the past decade, we have graduated more than 20,000 researchers uh, with a uh, sizable track record of academic publications, leadership in clinical trials, uh, citations, technology patents, and just innovation when it comes to biomedical research. Uh, all of these researchers live in the Learner Research Institute, which is in the middle of our Cleveland hospital campus, allowing us this interaction between research and clinical care and um, making it part of our DNA. Uh, who's IBM Research? Uh, it, they, um, this is probably not an introduction that's necessary, but this slide is a reflection of the facts that helped us, Cleveland Clinic, uh, decide who to partner with when it comes to computation for uh, research. What is the Discovery Accelerator? It's a partnership between Cleveland Clinic and IBM with the vision to propel discoveries that solve tomorrow's healthcare problems today. And we are accomplishing that through advanced computing that is applied uh, to our biomedical challenges. Um, quantum computing is one of the capabilities that the Discovery Accelerator provide with the other two being AI and high performance uh, computing. 
Uh, this is the first on-premises IBM Quantum System 1, which we just finished installing last month in Cleveland Clinic. It's 127 qubits that are in our campus, in that Learner Research Institute that I mentioned earlier, uh, available for our researchers to, uh, to use uh, in partnership with uh, the expertise of IBM. Uh, it's the first dedicated uh, uh, quantum uh, for healthcare and life sciences in the middle of a healthcare and life sciences institution. And uh, in uh, our partnership, we are committed to deploying IBM Quantum System 2 when we finish uh, investing the 567 million into the two new research buildings that uh, we're getting done over the next couple of years. Now, what have we done in our first year um, of the Discovery Accelerator? We're off to a good start. We supported uh, 46 investigators, launched 25 research projects in the areas of quantum chemistry or quantum machine learning uh, and AI grants, papers. But more importantly, we created a pipeline uh, in our uh, team and infrastructure for a competitive project selection process where every three months we uh, allow our researchers across both organizations to collaborate and compete along a vision that we set for research priorities. And that is how we created the pipeline that now exists and um, will sustain it and grow it moving forward. These are some examples uh, of the research that we're performing. The last question, the most important one, what do we see moving forward? We see ourselves working with you, with Quantum Basel, with other partners to create a, an ecosystem for uh, quantum in healthcare and life sciences. Um, Cleveland Clinic is leading. Obviously, we made all of the investment and we're off and running, but we know we cannot do this by ourselves. Uh, we want to work with partners like you to create this ecosystem. Uh, uh, this picture here is from our ribbon cutting ceremony, our launch for the quantum, um, which you see here in the background. Uh, uh, and you see the commitment from leadership across both organization and local government. Um, national uh, federal government too uh, for uh, the the quantum. Our teams are visiting each other. This is Cleveland Clinic and IBM. This is IBM and Cleveland Clinic. And uh, we are working with local partners and are looking to expand. Uh, so my takeaway, my main takeaway to all of you is please reach out. Uh, if you want to continue this conversation, if you would like us to um, uh, explore ideas for collaboration, please don't hesitate. Uh, I am looking forward to learning from all of you and uh, collaborating with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. That was also a very interesting insight from both sides, from Frederick and also from Laura. Maybe you can tell me a little bit more we really noticed that there are so many institutions that are working together, and a lot of them are connected, uh, like in a spider web. Maybe you can tell me a little bit more how the Cleveland Clinic is connected with you, with IBM, maybe also the Weizmann Institute, as they are doing research too. Exactly. Uh, in my first initial slide, I was uh, showing the, our partnerships with universities, where we just have been able to conduct this US-Switzerland Quantum Symposium, with nearly 30 industry and academic partners on site. And we have also was showing research institutes. And research institutes are important as we as a technology provider do not have this kind of know-how, but they 
they need perhaps technology access. Now one can say they've got their own quantum computer, but this is one. And if we think about these other opportunities we can do, and if we think about Cleveland Clinic is in, clinic, uh, is in uh, Cleveland in US and we are in Europe. So I wouldn't say I, uh, this with the spider web, but yes, we are connected. And through our partnership with IBM, there are only about 25 partners worldwide who have the opportunities to access those kind of systems as well. And so for us, it is very important not to be local, not to be only nationwide, because quantum will change many industries. And if you really, again, think forward 10 years ahead, then you have to think across the border. You have to think all over the globe. This is, yes, Weizmann is important for us in Israel, Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, uh, in <laughs> Cleveland, and this is not the end. It will be more and more, and you see, this is also important because Switzerland is not part of Horizon at the moment, and therefore we also have to look where we can collaborate globally. Next to the border is a very good word because I think we're ready for our next speaker. The first two speakers came from the US and I think now we're ready to move a little bit more north and go to Canada. Exactly, but before we go there, I just want to make another referral because if you think back, you all remember the date when Gary Kasparov was been beaten by uh, Deep Blue and this was in 97. And the then fast computer had examined 200 million moves per second. Now, if that was a quantum machine, then this quantum machine could calculate one trillion moves per one second, four trillion moves per two seconds, and nine trillion moves per three seconds already. Now, having that in mind, you see quantum algorithms can solve problems faster than classical algorithms. And with that, I want to hand over to Murray Tom, Vice President of Quantum Business Innovation. Murray is building up the quantum ecosystem in Canada, and he's focusing on optimizing problems through quantum annealing. Murray, here we are again, two weeks later. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Demir. It's great to be here with you. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate World Quantum Day. Desiree, great to see you here as well. Right now, I'm live from the D-Wave Quantum Engineering Center of Excellence near Vancouver, Canada. And it's early here. It's uh, just past 7.30, but our day has already started. So you'll probably see some engineers, maybe some technicians uh, and some quantum mechanics passing by the hallway uh, as we're talking. Uh, you can see one of our Advantage quantum computers over my shoulder alongside the uh, roughly 20 systems we have here in our lab. Uh, as well as the systems we have installed at customer sites, uh, like the Lockheed USC ISI Quantum Computing Center, uh, which is our US in-region system in LEAP, and at the ULIC Supercomputing Center in Germany. Uh, um, and for those of you who are new to quantum, you know, D-Wave has over 20 years of experience making quantum computers. We were the first to commercialize quantum computing, and uh, we were the first to provide a quantum cloud service that gives you real-time access so that you can program our quantum computers and get answers back right away. Uh, and we're also a full stack quantum computing company. So we do everything from the actual chips and the hardware itself, like you can see over my shoulder, all the way up to a launch program, which we have to help you get your production applications uh, launched. Now, it's important to know that there are multiple models of quantum computing. Two of the uh, most commonly known ones are annealing and gate model, and they're maturing at different rates. Quantum annealing is the model that's being used in application use cases today. Now, the quantum annealing takes inspiration from neural network-based architectures. And really what, you know, the easiest way to think about it is that the quantum effects are a resource um, that allows the computer to move between solutions quickly, which makes it really well suited to applications and optimization. So what do I mean by optimization problems? I mean, areas in your business where you're trying to... Um, sort of minimize costs or minimize the time it takes to do something, or maybe you have a, a demand profile you're trying to meet that varies over time and you're trying to make sure you minimize the, the difference between the resources that you, you bring uh, uh, to your work and the demand that you're expecting to see. And these kinds of problems, you know, they involve decisions where you're assigning resources to tasks and those choices uh, affect other choices you might make in that optimization. That makes them really complicated for classical computing technology. Uh, and we find that they're ubiquitous across nearly every organization and industry. 
Now, um, the quantum computers that we're using for these optimization applications are advantage quantum computing systems. They're built for business. They're the largest programmable quantum computers in the world. They've got 5,000 qubits. They're all on a single chip uh, with 15-way connectivity. And they're accessible to you right now through our Leap Quantum Cloud service that's available across 39 countries. Um, and uh, we've been thrilled working with uh, Quantum Basel and the companies associated with Quantum Basel to, to help work on solving these really challenging problems. Uh, it really enables developers who are proficient in Python uh, to easily build and run applications. Now, let's take a look in the lab and uh, hear from my colleague, Mark Johnson, who will talk about how we bring these technologies together to allow you to use quantum computers for real applications. D-Wave's approach to product development is really quite unique, really because we're taking the system engineering seriously from the beginning. If we're going to get to thousands of qubits, how are we going to talk to them all? How are we going to read all of them out? You know, how are we going to control and program them? How are we going to control the electromagnetic environment? How are we going to be able to keep these systems cold for months, uh, if not years, and have them installed in a remote data center? Um, it's, it's understanding the whole stack and the whole product from the beginning. Awesome. Okay, so now that you've had a look in the lab and the technology that's under development, you'll be delighted to find out that you can access these quantum computers today, right now. Uh, you can do that through our Leap Quantum Cloud platform. Uh, we have an open source software development kit that allows you to program these systems in Python. You don't need to be a quantum physicist to start using quantum computers and applications today. And we have many open source programming examples to help get you started uh, so that you accelerate you on your path for application development, as well as training courses that you can take online. We also have a launch program, uh, which we use to help accelerate our uh, customers on their, along their quantum journey, whether it's from you know, their problem discovery phase and looking for applications that are suitable to quantum computing, all the way up to uh, the phase in their work where they're launching production applications. <clears throat> At D-Wave, we're deeply motivated to solve our customers' toughest problems. That's, that's what drives us. So we've looked at applications you know, of all sorts from like narrow applications that are really tailored to a specific use case to those that are really broadly applicable across industries. Um, and really those are ones that we've seen that can provide impact right now as well as well into the future. Uh, so everything from the evolutionary applications to the revolutionary applications. And we've worked with more than 60 commercial companies um, and customers on quantum hybrid applications at scale across a broad range of challenges today. So <clears throat> some of the examples of like where we've seen practical quantum applications for real world problems is in the area of logistics um, and scheduling, kind of like examples like employee scheduling. We've also seen it in the life sciences industry and drug discovery and clinical trial optimization, uh, as well as in finance uh, with financial modeling or in financial transactions with fraud detection uh, and applications like that. It really helps your organization to run your applications and your businesses more effectively and also to be able to respond more quickly to change, uh, which really translates into increased efficiencies, you know, the opportunity to save money, uh, to secure a competitive edge in your industry, uh, or even to advance sustainability. Now, let's take a look at the fascinating quantum hybrid applications that were run by Symantec with the Port of Los Angeles, Minton AI, and the Patterson Food Group. Just like with classical computing, quantum computing is a horizontal technology that applies to businesses broadly in a variety of industries and sectors. In the case of the Port of Los Angeles, we've worked with a company named Savantex who have used their, their own system uh, to help increase the efficiency of the operations at Port 300, which handles you know, metal materials there, increasing uh, the amount of cargo that's handled by the rubber-tired gantries by 60%. And lastly, uh, Mint and AI, working in the space of protein design, they're really looking at the designing de novo proteins. So these are new proteins that can be potential future therapies. And they've managed to quantum design proteins that they've been able to chemically synthesize and take to live virus testing against COVID-19. Quantum computing has matured to the point where it's become a critical part of the enterprise's compute infrastructure. You don't need to be a quantum physicist to program quantum computers. It's really using the technology is no more or less complex than building a new application. Our data scientists and data engineers did not have any previous experience with quantum computing. But uh, with the help of D-Wave and a few days of training and using the quantum compute accelerators, they were very quickly up to speed on how to use the system. The Patterson Food Group is a 105-year-old company. We decided to start with team member schedule automation with the idea that we could provide more flexibility for our team members, 
reduce manual processes, and improve the customer experience by making sure that we had the right number of team members at the right time. Our largest banner is Save on Foods, which has 180 stores, and depending on the community has services such as pharmacies, uh, full service delis, bakeries, wine sales, Starbucks kiosks. Our initial proof of concept only took a few weeks. Getting the team productive, proving that a solution was viable was surprisingly quick. Isn't it incredible to see how quantum computing is being used for real world applications? It's in grocery stores, it's in shipping uh, port operations, and it's in therapeutic drug design. You know, our customers are our biggest motivation, and it's great to see how they're using our products. Uh, and D-Wave has a, a history of relentless product delivery. Uh, we have our hybrid solvers, which are designed to combine the best of quantum computing and classical computing and bring them together to help accelerate your applications and bring you business value. And it, for programmers and our customers, it expands the set of addressable problems that they can tackle and apply quantum computing to. At D-Wave, those hybrid algorithms teach us the best way to you know, uh, guide the design of these quantum computers in order to be able to maximize the benefit that you'll see in your business applications. And we're using that information to inform our next generation program. Our Advantage 2 system is already in development. We have prototypes that are being tested in the lab behind me, uh, and they're expected to have an increased number of qubits and couplers. That's up to 7,000 qubits with 20-way connectivity. And that's because we learned through that hybrid program that increasing the connectivity of our processors is important in order for them to take a larger piece out of those application workflows and contribute uh, more value to them. On top of that, we're gonna be continuing the development of our gate model of quantum computing program. And that's because uh, you know, at D-Wave, we wanna be able to provide our customers with a full quantum solution. Those gate model systems are going to be useful for unlocking some new application areas in the future, like solving differential equations or, or doing quantum chemistry. So whether our customers need to be doing uh, optimization in the future, which is going to require our quantum annealing systems or those quantum chem chemistry applications, we're going to be there to provide them the technology that, that, that they need. Now, as a group, as an industry and a community, we're teachers and learners. We each bring our expertise to that community and we also learn from one another. And it's exciting to see how that community is coming together to solve the most difficult problems facing you know, business and society today. So as a community, we're regularly seeing powerful demonstrations um, of quantum accelerated information processing. This is the time to discover the areas in your business where you can harness the emerging capabilities of quantum computing for the future, and as well as today. And <clears throat> it's never been easier to get started. So in my experience, it's important to think about the business objectives that you want to achieve and then start exploring how quantum computing technology can help you drive those results. Um, so from all of us here at D-Wave, you know, happy World Quantum Day. I'm excited to have you here. Um, and back to you, Demir. Thank you, Mary. Great. Have a great day to Barnaby. Bye. Thanks. That was really on point, and I thought that was a really interesting quote that he said that when you're working in the quantum field that you are a student and a teacher at the same time. As you're also in this field, what do you think? Who are you teaching and from who are you learning? This is a good question. It's a circular question, I'd say. Because when you see, let's say, examples like Safe on Food with D-Wave system, when we approach companies here in Switzerland, industry or in Europe, then we can tell them about our partnerships experience with exactly those people who already solve these kind of problems. So we don't have to start from scratch. On the other hand, when we do these kind of projects, we can also refer to them for our next customers. And so it's a circular uh, way, I'd say. But I also thought it, it's quite important what, what, Tom's, uh, what Mary said about evolution and revolution, because we with D-Wave see quite a fast pace of industry in the field of logistic, where we can save now and here, where we can uh, make better efficiency in logistical problems. We also see something which will come in the financial services industry with portfolio optimization risk. This is something we can do together with D-Wave and with IBM. And then on the longer run, when we look at life science and uh, then we are looking perhaps at five years plus, 10 years plus, but we have to be there. And when we talk about evolution or revolution as well, then 
you heard him saying, the, uh, how was it called, Advantage 2. IBM was referring to System 2. We are right now, like in the 90s, when the, the classical computer had this 286, 386, 486, the Pentium processor. This is where we are. And when we start now to think how to collaborate with that, if we now understand how the industry can, can use this kind of technology, then we are there when quantum computing takes really the advantage. So this is where we are at the moment, and uh, it's just the beginning. I really <laughs> love the passion that yeah. this topic can bring to the table. And Alexandra also joined us now for the next speaker. Uh, maybe, Alexandra, you can uh, introduce our next speakers yes. as you're the expert for that. I'm very happy to have a plug and play as a guest speaking to us. Plug and play is one of our very early partners when it comes to innovation here in Uptown Basel. But um, Plug and Play is also an early stage investor when it comes to quantum investments. And I'm happy to uh, introduce Leonardo Rocchetti, Rocchetti from uh, Plug and Play in Sunnyvale, California. The stage is yours, Leonardo, to tell us about your strategy, the strategy Plug and Play is following when investing in early stage quantum startups. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. So uh, I'm, it's a pleasure for me being here with you and uh, speaking about like quantum computation. So as a technology investor and I'm curious about like uh, quantum computation, uh, actually, I want to tell you like my story about quantum computing and um, and actually how plug and play like jumped into this uh, like amazing space. Uh, so at the end of 2020, so my team in Silicon Valley were just placing like the first bets in quantum computation because we oversee and we force the uh, gray space growing here that might change like entire industries. So, and if you don't know how plug and play invest, actually plug and play is an early stage investor where we used to invest from pre-seed to series A. And we usually invest small checks in the ticket because actually our biggest value in investing in the companies is uh, our corporate network. Through, through it, we uh, support them and uh, we give them the access to corporates actually to place uh, their product like in the market. And, um, and when we start seeing a growing interest from our corporate partner in that space, and also we survey a few business leaders of our corporate networks that were saying to us that actually they're planning to invest in quantum computation. So our investment team and ourselves as a team, as an investment team in Silicon Valley. So for us, this was a big uh, validation. So actually, then we started like to realize uh, how big the market opportunity was. And uh, we started making our research in the in the quantum computing space, in computing space. And actually, we see a lot of uh, investments growing from 2020, like and uh, fast forward to today. Actually, in 2022, only there were two billion of private investors worldwide that were placing in like, quantum computation, and only almost one billion investments in Europe. So um for quantum computer startups, uh, actually, uh, it might be like really challenging, like to raise like uh, big rounds, to raise rounds, because and um, because it's very computer intensive business, like most most likely. Uh, but in Europe, like we see a lot of companies succeeding, so they they raise uh, multiple rounds. So we have uh, companies that there is more than one hundred million, such as IQM, IQM or other companies that were raised like a Series A for 30 or 50 million, such as OQC or Electron. So, and uh, so we saw like a growing space and actually we realized that uh, we should absolutely jump into it, like to not lose like the next wave of innovation. So, and we start studying the space and we realize uh, uh, that this, uh, uh, the quantum computing can dramatically change every industries. And also like the business model that we know today, uh, can be completely different, like in the in the quantum computing space. So, in fact, as uh, previously mentioned, so uh, from um, um, from D Wave, so um, one of the model is a quantum as a service that is allowing startups to collect clients and give them the access, like to and the benefits uh, of the benefits of quantum technology. And um, uh, basically, we this uh, this kind of models can drive the adoption of. Um, uh, quantum computing, like on a broader scale, and actually startups are, are developing their technology to to make it happen. So at at the moment, at plug and play, of course, we don't foresee like a personal like quantum computer like in every home, as uh, like someone said in the past. 
because we also like we still miss a dominant design in the space uh, and we see a coexistence of multiple quantum computation platform in the market where all the companies are trying to develop uh, we will develop like in our opinion like specific use case for each uh, for each platform so at plug and play we place moved some bets in the space so one of the companies we invested in in 2020 was a quantum that actually is one of the companies solving one of the biggest challenges we believe that is in quantum computing that actually is uh, the access of talent so what a quantum does uh, is develops a uh, technology that gives uh, uh, general and tailor made uh, uh, applications for uh, for non experts to apply like quantum computing uh, into into in um, in the in their uh, industries another company where we invest in actually is a uh, ubiqd that is like uh, that is ubiquity actually this is an american company that works with uh, like quantum dots that are crystals that are extremely small that actually can um, have a high efficiency on um, photobioluminescence and actually this proper uh, this uh, this is a particular property that can be that the uh, ubiquity leverages uh, like to create uh, like innovative solutions for agriculture and by allowing plants like to get more uh, like from the sun so in, according to like the applications of quantum computing uh, are multiple and actually as um, also very interest like in climate investing we strongly believe that quantum computation can can help to solve like the biggest challenges uh, that we hold that the humanity is facing that is like the climate change because actually like can be like the underlying technology where uh, um companies like can develop the can can um, can develop like the algorithm can help like to develop like new materials new algorithm for example like in the battery space so quantum computing can help to provide a better understanding of the electrolyte complex like formation but help like to find replacement for the cathode and anode and actually that can drive to the creation of new batteries uh, where actually we can have new batteries with the same with an higher um, uh, energy density that can drive like the adoption of electric vehicles on a larger scale with a sustainable cost um, we strongly believe that uh, in this technology and actually at plug and play we are uh, uh, deeply um, monitoring the space uh, like to invest in early stage companies and as well as we are seeing a lot of interest from our corporate partners and we are creating like the the stage like for the company like to pitch uh, their solutions in front of our corporate partners as uh, we can see that this technology can help a lot uh, in solving like, the biggest ch challenges of our society There is a, so the field is so huge. So what um, what is the most interesting technology, technological developments you see in the quantum space, and do you see a difference in the different markets, maybe between Europe and the US? So like in, we see like a great a great movement and great activity in Europe actually, and uh, like the biggest uh, like one of the the main technologies that we are seeing is. Um, what I mentioned like previously actually are technologies that are helping uh, like industries to develop like new materials, new um, new new drugs so that are leveraging the quantum computation to solve like complex algorithms that with normal computation will not be possible and to find like these uh, um, breakthrough technologies that can really like change our society. In fact in Europe we will see like multiple rounds and throughout 2022, um, despite like the market downturn in the second half of the year, so a lot of companies like mm, big rounds, such as uh, like IQM, that actually raised like 128 million round by like a climate investor that is like the World Fund, like to solve the problem of the battery, as I mentioned previously, or uh, other companies uh, such as like Pascal, for example, are uh, using this technology to develop in, like superconductor materials. So we see this technology in multiple industries, and uh, but what we uh, what we are looking at and at, at plug and play is something to, that can um, that can have strong industry applications. As also we can help them through our like corporate partner network that are looking for these solutions, and they they have been looking into these for in the past few years 
by reconnect like to the to the normal um, to the to normal technology. And uh, the U.S. has a strong governmental initiative on quantum. Can you maybe tell us how this governmental initiative influences you as a VC? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the um, the government initiatives are very important, like for the development of the te these uh, technologies, because uh, uh, it's very capital intensive and uh, require a lot of a um, lot of money, like to to put in place like the 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 first steps uh, of uh, of the products. So um, I think like this is helping us a lot to lowering down the cost of uh, of learning. Of this technology, like that, can foster also the, uh, the 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 growth of new experts in the space. This is something that is might be uh, crucial, like for the adoption of, of quantum computing. Uh, but also as an early stage investor, like these uh, government initiatives uh, uh, to invest uh, uh, deeply, like into university laboratories, um, but also with the help of the private sector, so might help to. Um, to give the chance like to entrepreneurs like to start their journey and bring them uh, bring this technology out of from the laboratories to the market leonardo we just saw that we got a question from the live stream comment section maybe you can answer that are you currently looking at interesting startups in the space <laughs> i wonder which space is meant <laughs> our space or the space <laughs> maybe you can answer both <laughs> I mean, uh, so we are deeply looking into into this space. Like sometimes uh, at plug and play, given like our role as an investor, and given also like our ticket size is um, is is uh, is might can be like complex, like to invest in this technology, especially um, when they just become popular or famous, or just they we can hear like a lot of hype in the companies. That means that means for that for us, it's going to be like too late because actually the, this company will going to raise like um big rounds and for us like do not make like um financially sense so like to look into these companies what we do is that we go directly into into the university labs and to to speak to entrepreneurs there and to try to find technology entrepreneurs that are bringing the technology out of the laboratories because this is like the way plug and play we can invest like to be in there the first ticket in the in the journey so but at the moment where well, i'm not looking in, into any particular company Super, thank you, Leonardo, for these amazing insights. And I see we I think we see each other at the co-investors table. Goodbye to Sunnyvale. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, we already come slowly but surely to an end of our second session today. Maybe the word to you, Alexandra, if you want to um, have some words to say goodbye and maybe some thank yous. So thank you so much for joining. I am uh, amazed that so many people came and I know a lot of people are joining us online. I think it's a very important day to also create um, visibility for quantum technology, which will change the industries. And I'm really happy that we had the chance to present what we do today. Thank you for coming. Damian? Um, yeah, I've got a couple of points. First of all, uh, back to the space questions from before, I think, uh, there's also one important notion, and Alexandra will be able to answer this perhaps in the upper session afterwards, but there are indeed startups in the space field who are also looking to collaborate with us because there, for satellites, quantum can be used not just for replacement of GPS, but also for, for, for uh, very accurate clocks. And so this is something which is referring to as well. Damia, I just saw we got a question for you, um, which says, which are the areas where quantum computing can make a big difference? If you refer areas as industries, then I would like to say this is the three time frames I was uh, looking forward to before. The first one is logistics, uh, where we see immediate uh, efficiency gains. The second one is financial services industry, where we also see in the risk portfolio analysis and uh, 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 risk mitigation and portfolio analysis something, and then for sure healthcare. But this is just the beginning, because at the end, if you look at logistics as such, every single company has got a lot of logistics. So these would, I say, are three industries, if this is the areas, what was meant at the question. And uh, 
yeah, uh, you asked me about so, some last words, so I really want also to thank you. And I also want to say perhaps a small thing at the end, because uh, it is indeed a quantum leap uh, what we took over the last years, because quantum as an industry what is moving exponentially. Because if you see at the investments, if you see what's happening, how many companies are coming, this is something which you have to be ahead of. And a quantum leap, uh, as we know it, is a, a huge, and I said this before, a sudden increase or advance in something. Uh, 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 it's an abrupt change. But on the other hand, in a scientific manner, quantum leap is rarely used because it's, it's, it's the context, it's, it's originated as a synonym of a quantum jump which describes the abrupt transition of an electron, of an atom, just from a discrete energy state to another. So it's the smallest step possible. So, <laughs> and between that, the scientific quantum leap and the industry quantum leap, there are indeed a few years to go, but we see already many efficiency gains here. And this is why we think that building up an ecosystem like Quantum Basel, building up an ecosystem with technology partners, with companies, with research institutes, with universities, is very important. And so we would like to invite all of you to, take, uh, to contact us, to, to help us, how could we perhaps, our technology access you, to go with the startups of Kai Ventures. And this is something which we are really looking forward to. I also do want to thank all our speakers who joined us today um, and also, of course, a big thank you for the location here at Uptown Basel and also to Alexandra and Damir for, well, being a part of Switzerland that is represented in today's World Quantum Day. For our guests who are joining us here um, in this room, I just wanted to tell you that after um, the live session, we will have Quantum and Quiche. So for everybody who is not here live, you are missing out on something. But um, jokes besides, as you notice, it needs a lot of people and institutions working together as a team to create something big. And I think when I look back to this day, to this World Quantum Day, and think back about all the speakers who were willing to share their work and their passion for quantum, I'm really touched because I think this quantum field brings people together, it connects, it inspires for that people are able to build a world together um, with no borders and global um, differences. So I think that's an amazing and powerful thought to end today's session. I'm wishing everybody a wonderful World Quantum Day and goodbye from Quantum Basel. Thank you. Thank you.